The Winter Olympic Games, yeah, they are now just weeks away. And the Biden administration has announced the U.S. will not be sending diplomatic or official representatives to Beijing, although athletes will still be allowed to attend and participate. So this is the first American boycott since the 1980 Games in Moscow, where Canada also took part in that boycott, for the record. Now, Conservative Party leader Aaron O'Toole is calling for our country to follow suit also and boycott. So, should Canada boycott the next Winter Games? Well, there are many National Olympic Committee members across international countries around the world who feel like they've been put into this position because of the ineffectiveness of the IOC. Um, the IOC is a nonpartisan party. You know, they don't belong to any nation. And this is, you know, if there's anyone to step in without allegiances, technically, it would be them to, like, take a stand on something and talk to their host country and lean, yeah. uh, use whatever diplomatic uh, influence they have. And so the reason why countries like the U.S. and now Canada have to consider this is because the IOC has been largely, some would say, weak in handling the Chinese government situation. I guess the question is, should the IOC, though, be the one that is governing this? I know they govern the Olympics. Mm -hmm. The question is, as China, if I may quote them today, is um, are Olympics and sports in general supposed to be neutral from world politics. Mm. This is not the first time that the world is asking this question. Of course. But IOC has, has often led with, mm -hmm. this is supposed to be the point of Olympics, that they transcend whatever is happening between countries on a political level so that sport can actually, per, per, actually perhaps be a unifying force in the world when it seems like everything else but is going well, on. What I would say to that, Mel, now. what I would say to Matt, Matt like that, I, I get it, but the value statement of the Olympics is based on, as they say, excellence, friendship, and respect, uh, using arts, education, and sport to advance a better world. When your host country is being accused of genocide, I feel like that would be go against your value system yes. in creating a better world. When the host country has been dealing with allegations of genocide, let me stress that again. So, Stay neutral. Kicked off this, as far as I know, because those allegations have been out there for quite some time. Uh, yeah. So really, what kicked this off? And think about it: the Winter Olympics are what Febu early February. Yep. Um, so this is like late in the game to be even talking about this in a way. That's a great point. Right? Like, why is this happening? Because of ten the tennis uh, star, yeah. and I want to get her name right, Peng Shui. Um, her allegations that she put out there um, regarding. Um, uh, the Chinese, a former Chinese vice premier, that he allegations of rape. Mm -hmm. She has since taken those back, apparently. Um, but there's someone a, has taken someone those back. Has taken Correct. Those back. So Correct. there's a lot of questions, and actually CNN did an interview with Dick Pound, who's one of the IOC's, I think, vice president. Yeah. And uh, I mean, he was sort of like, "Well, we talked to, we heard some people talk to her, and she seems okay, and so whatever." Like it was very, very much uh, a very lukewarm, and I think not a very effective statement. But that's why the U.S. is stepping in. Not that tennis is part of the Winter Olympics, but because the situation is shady. They've taken the strongest stance so the, far. Exactly. But the question now is what Canada decides to do. If Canada decides to, like the U.S., send the athletes, but sort of not be as kind of gung-ho this year, do we run the risk of putting our athletes at well, risk, a la the, the Michaels? Like, the, the United States not sending diplomats, that sounds, okay, on, on the surface, okay, okay, we'll just send the athletes, let the games be about the spirit of sport and so on. What happens if something goes wrong with the athletes and they're the very people that are supposed to be there to protect them are not there? That sounds like a recipe for disaster. Did you guys hear uh, great NBA player Ennis Cantor Freedom? That guy? Anyway, he said, thanks Kwame, he said something really great. He changed when he got his American citizenship. He actually changed his last name to Freedom. He truly believes in this. And he's encouraging Olympic athletes, a couple people from our uh, Canadian hockey team who have been invited to play. All of the gold medals you can win in the world are not more important than your values, your principles. Ooh. And they're, that that hit me hard. Like, that's a that, big throwdown. That's a big throwdown. And but I again, think it's true. Pressure on athletes, you know, and and, and, and thing, I see what you're saying. And that's, that's not fair. Yeah, it's totally Why unfair. Why should they be having be put in this situation? Right? They've that's been training the for line. years and years. Some of them their whole life for this moment, right? And so now you're making them. They already have to make a, like a million important decisions: traveling with their family, right. training during COVID. Yeah. And now you're putting this on them. Like I get it. I understand the spirit yeah. behind what he's saying. But at the same time, there are people in leadership who have failed these athletes. And I think that that so at the top you, of that so is I the think IOC. I love everything you're saying but then so what's what's the bottom line then like, what is the way forward do we not send them 
No, I think they are going. I don't think that that's a question at this point. The Canadian Olympic Committee wants them to go. By all accounts, they're going. The question now does get put on the athletes. They have to make a big call uh, asking themselves about their personal safety. Mm -hmm. there, this is a country where people just disappear off the street, and I am not overstating that. Not just any that. people. They can disappear a billionaire. Yes, yeah. and well, so I think the question really becomes how safe do you personally feel? That's why I think that America, although they are the first ones to step out of the gate, they have put the call out to allies. You going to join us? So there is a clock ticking for not only Canada, but the entire European Union. I think the all the countries thing is all that are still they're, nothing. They're, they're waiting yeah. for to they're waiting for the allies to come forward to make a statement together. There's one thing for the United States to come out because they're always known as the world's policemen. But now, where is the rest of the world? And I think and, Canada's included in that. And maybe have a conversation about how we don't find ourselves in this situation again moving forward, like how we got to this place in the, in the first place. Yeah, but I think you're going to still cross the same bridge. If you're an athlete, you have a choice also. Uh, look, it's someone's calling me right now. Uh, it might be the government <laughs> just telling me to ring Chill back. Out. I don't know. Chill, Chill out. out. Yeah. Um, but the point is, I think that if you're an athlete and you know that you've got this many years to excel at your sport, we knew how many years ago that China would be hosting. Yeah, These are not new saying. allegations. So it all ultimately how did we get does. To this point? Yes, but I think it still Money. does fall on the athlete to make that decision. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll find out soon. I mean, what, the Olympics are eight weeks away? Yeah. Yeah, uh, so we'll probably have more on that, but to something different now.